Hi, for today's post on Emerging Ed Tech, I decided I wanted to learn about using the iPad as a digital whiteboard. As I learn more about the iPad and how it can be used in the educational setting, uh, this potential use is kind of obvious and, and certainly going to come up if uh, you have faculty trying this. You know, can I use it as a whiteboard and project it uh, onto a larger screen and perhaps even collaborate a bit? So my approach to this was to pop over to the App Store on the iPad, and I'm using an iPad too, by the way. Um, pop over to the App Store, look for whiteboard applications, search out whiteboard, uh, look for uh, those that are free because there's so many good free apps. Why not start by taking a look and see if there's some good ones? And, uh, and look specifically for those that have been rated by customers with a four or higher. So that's what I've done and um, checking out some of those applications and sharing them with you here as well as providing some information about how to hook the uh, iPad up to a uh, projector or a uh, high def television. So here we have the applications that came up when I searched the App Store for the using one word whiteboard and focusing specifically on free apps that had ratings of four or better and I downloaded each of these apps, gave them a shot, found that four of them were definitely worth sharing and four of them I kinda cast by the wayside and I explained in the post why. So one of the first apps I checked out was Screen Chomp from TechSmith who makes Jing and, and Camtasia and it was a great little app, relatively simple but the thing that was, was cool about it was that it made it easy to record your whiteboard session and then let others access it. Uh, I have a link out on the uh, blog post to a little screen chomp I created as an example. And uh, I, I enjoyed the app, thought it was, it was good. The next app that I checked out and wanted to share is Zigzag Board. Zigzag Board had a couple unique features. One being that you could select anything that you'd drawn and you could resize it, you could move it, or you could delete it. And the other thing which was really cool was that you could invite somebody to join a meeting and they could see what you were doing as you were doing it. I don't think it allows collaboration. I tried this by sharing my session on the iPad and then joining it from a laptop and I could see what I as the originator of the session on the iPad was doing but I couldn't actually collaborate and participate. But again, pretty neat functionality for a free tool. Now don't forget you can come out to the blog post and read all about these tools and read the uh, various information that I leave here including things like uh, how many colors and the different types of uh, pen thicknesses and so on that are available with these tools. So this video blog post is meant to supplement the main blog posting and I hope you'll come out and check out the uh, the posting on EmergingEdTech.com. The next app I wanted to recommend is SyncSpace. SyncSpace had two unique features. One is that it seemed that you could resize the grid you were working on indefinitely in either direction so you could make it really really tiny or really really big and that was pretty cool. The other thing even better was that you could invite somebody to collaborate with you and that was pretty easy to do. I did it with my son on, his, on sharing across two iPads and we were able to actually collaborate and make changes and see them come across in near real time so that was that was really nice. And the last app I wanted to recommend is Jot Free, which brings together a lot of different functionality in terms of having a nice array of pen sizes and colors and uh, even some different variations and the ability to add text to what you're doing. And um, while it doesn't have the collaborative tools that some of the other ones do or the ability to easily uh, resize or move, there is an upgrade available that will provide some additional functionality. So I thought Jot Free was also worth recommending and checking out. And the last thing I want to point you to on the original blog post is this bit about connecting the iPad to a projector or HDTV and what you'll need in order to be able to do that. So I hope you'll pop on by and take a look at that. And thanks and have a great day.